Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents under the umbrella of Good Parenting, Brighter Children. Today we're going to talk about books again and reading to your children. I think of uh, probably the four most important things that you can do for your children is read to them every day, expose them to music, movement, and good nutrition. So let's talk about, again, I've, I've mentioned in another one of these, I talked about the importance of starting to read to your children in utero and reading to them every single day until they leave for college. Again, a lot of parents say to me, well, once my child starts reading, do I really have to read to them every day? And the answer is a resounding yes. Continue to read to them every single day. It will help them not only with language development and their vocabularies will be more sophisticated, but they will just be smarter. It builds a bigger, better brain. They will be better at everything. The other thing is what you're doing when you read to your children is you're introducing them to all kinds of places that are far away and it brings it right into your living room or right into the bedroom where you're reading. Wherever you are reading to them, you can bring all of those exciting things right into your home as you are reading each day. Now, a couple of things that I would like to suggest that you do when you're reading. Notice where your children focus. My oldest son, he actually, he was the one who started reading and taught himself to read when he was two. But when I was reading to him, even as a little boy, even before he was two, he always used to focus on the words of the book. Not necessarily the pictures, it was always the words. And he would point to different words and he would ask me, what does that word say? I had another son and he wanted, and he was totally mesmerized by the pictures. And he would ask me all kinds of different questions about the pictures. Now my son, who really enjoyed the words and everything, he became an attorney. My son, who was really into all of the pictures, he was an incredible artist and he ended up getting his PhD in English and he loves the arts and sciences. My third son, what he was interested in, it was very interesting, is he always looked at the expressions on the faces of the animals or the children in the books. And he would say to me, what do you think they're thinking? Why do you, or do you, do you think they're sad? Do you think they're mad? Do you think they're happy? He would ask me those kinds of questions. He ended up graduating in film and philosophy, so he's very much in tune to people's feelings. And my fifth son, he was interested in how everything went to create that book. He was always asking me, you know, about the book itself and how you make things and how you create things. And he went into business. So look at different things that your child is focusing on and that they focus on time after time after time each day as you are reading to them. Another huge advantage of reading to your children is you're building critical thinking skills. Now music will also do this, but as you're reading to them, you have the opportunity to ask them a lot of questions. Creativity and imagination starts with being able to think conceptually and can think critically. So when you're reading about Curious George, ask them. Why do you think Curious George did that particular thing? If you were Curious George, what would you do? Would you do the same thing or would you do something different? Any of you who have read Miss Nelson, the Miss Nelson and Miss Nelson is missing books, you'll know that Miss Nelson is a teacher who has a rowdy class and she has to dress up as Viola Swamp to get those kids in order. And the, your children will see that. They'll see that Miss Nelson is dressing up. The children in the classroom don't see it. So you can ask them, have you had a teacher who's had to be really strict with a lot of the kids in the classroom? How would you get kids to behave in class? Do you behave in class? So you can see, ask them a lot of what if and why do you think this is happening? And that will help to develop their critical thinking skills. You know, it's one thing having a bright child who is book smart, but what you want is a child eventually who can think critically. Thinking critically means that they are taking information and they're able to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information. And the easiest form of critical thinking is compare contrast. Even a little two-year-old, you can take a book and have them compare contrast. Where are the yellow dots on this page? Where are the uh, orange dots on this page? How are these similar? How are these different? You can start with those little critical thinking skills while you're reading books, even with a two-year-old. Let me leave you with a fun quote. It's, by Mem Fox, and I love her, and I have some of her books, and she talks a lot about the importance of reading books to your children. She says, when I say to a parent, read to a child, I don't want it to sound like medicine. I want it to sound like chocolate. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.